Hi! I just got home from Golgo Bordello. I'm a little deaf and really disheveled. Um, my hair is a greater mess than I intended it to be. The, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't even know why I tried styling it because I knew I would get sweaty. But, um, yes. This was my evening. So, this is my ticket. And if you look at the ticket, it says that the doors open at 6.30. Now, I am a geek, and I'm going to take these off because of the glare. I am a geek, and I plan on getting to shows when doors open because I want to be up front, and I especially wanted to be up front for this show. So I got to the venue at 6.00 thought I can wait outside for a half hour. That's fine. Totally fine. I can... I was wearing all black, but at least it was a tank top and stuff that's now really stretched out. Anyhow, so I get there and the line was not that bad. I thought, yes, I am going to get right up front and I am not moving an inch. It's going to be amazing. Because everything said that the show would technically start at 7.30. So I thought, okay, this will be fine. So waiting in line outside in the near 100 degree heat in an all black outfit. Cats, stop. Um, keeps going on, time lingering. 6.30 rolls around, doors aren't open. The um, staff people keep milling about. At one point though, Eugene and Sergey, and I'm assuming some, I don't know who else, it was like a roadie or something, walked by and people were like, ooh, well not really, we were all trying to act like, ah, it's you, we're not freaking out, we were all freaking out, but um, they really, they didn't even say really anything to us, I know some dude said, hey, I really like you guys, and they just walked past, which is fine, I probably would do the same, anyway, so, then, like, around 7, they had us move to a different location to make the line go in a different way. I don't think we got in until probably, like, 7.30ish. We, I was outside in the fucking heat for an hour. It was fine. I was really thirsty, but I didn't... I thought, you know, I, I can... I'll be fine. This is the running theme. I'll be fine. And I really, I was fine, but I didn't like it. And um, speaking of drinks, I have, I got so exhausted that on my way home, I went to 7-Eleven and got a liter of Coke. I don't drink Coke that often. And I have already had two, about two thirds of this because I'm fucking thirsty. And I know this isn't hydrating anything, but it tastes good, so there. Um, yes, so get in, got right up front, right by the gate, um, and you know, if you've watched the movie Clueless, and you know Cher's brother, I can't remember his name, and now I can't remember the actor's name, shit. If you've watched Clueless and the brother, the step ex-stepbrother that's becomes her boyfriend. She has some line about if you go to if they go to a show or a club, he finds the one adult to talk to. That happens to me. So I end up next to this mom who went to the show with her kid, which was really kind of cute. Um, but she she glommed onto me because at one point I asked if she was okay because people were you know pushing and shoving. But, um, yeah, she was sweet. The people next to me were really nice. Um, the opening band was Visa, which I hadn't heard of before, but they were amazing. Um, the singer reminded me of... Oh, my God, my cats are freaking out. Um, the singer reminded me of... Um, Something Wicked This Way Comes. I think it's Mr. Dark. I can't remember what his name is. He's the guy, the actor that's in... Um, Pirates of the Caribbean, that's like the dad, Kira Knightley's dad. I need to know names of actors. Um, 
so, but yeah, they were really great. And at one point, I think it was the basis, somebody had thrown a pick out. And I was, you know, fist pumping and I hit it. I thought I hit a bug, but I hit it into the area in between the gate and the stage. But the one of the camera guys that was there um, got it for me after Visa was done. So I get to add this to my pick collection, which I'm very pleased about. Um, and yeah, so then we all waited around. It was so, so hot, so hot. And there were so many people there. And um, I was so pissed because one of the staff guys came by and was like, hey, I'll have a free drink. And everybody's like, shit, give me water. It's like, yeah, I'll give you a free drink if you give me a cigarette. So what this has taught me is I need to bring cigarettes to shows if I want to have water. Yeah. So, um, hello cat. I didn't have water, but luckily um, the staff, a few of the bouncers were walking by with um, bottles of water and they were, you know, doing the little mama bird thing where you have to lean back and open your mouth and they'll pour it in. They did that and they only gave me two drops of water pissed, but um, they kept uh, poking the, t the caps of the bottles and then squirting it so everybody was getting drenched. I thought, well, that's nice, but I'm dying. Um, but then Golgo came on and they were amazing, as if they wouldn't be, you know, like, was there a possibility? Um, I was right in front of uh, the bassist and the, he, he and I had a lot of eye sex. Um, apparently Thomas likes spiky haired chicks. I don't know, but I was all excited. I was like, ooh, he's making eye contact. And then when they played Tribal Connection, when he was singing something about he, finding somebody from Tribal Connection, he said, my sister from Tribal Connection, and he pointed to me. It's like, oh, that's me. I'm your sister friend. So that, that was special. Uh, Eugene was to my left, and he wasn't really paying attention to our side of the stage, which kind of bummed me out. Um, but he did make eye contact quite a bit. I think I um, got to touch everybody's hand at some point. The accordion player... He's new, so I don't know his name, but he reminds me of somebody. He kind of looks like Leonardo DiCaprio, but that's not it. There's somebody else. And if you are a Gogol fan and can tell me who he is reminiscent of, I will give you a cigarette. <laughs> um, yeah, so the show was great. Everybody was going ape shit. Um, I don't think I have danced that hard and that... With that, without so without abandon, I can't even so much without abandon. That's what I'm trying to say. In a probably three years since I saw them last, and it was just it was incredible. Um, yeah, uh, at one point um, they uh, what were they doing? What song were they doing? Oh, they were doing uh, "Break the Spell," and um, Pedro was going back and forth looking for people to put the mic in front of, and he put the mic in front of my face, so I got to sing Break the Spell once for everyone. Not that they heard me, because it was just a mass of people yelling Break the Spell, but it was in my mouth, in front of my mouth, not in my mouth, that would be gross, um, so I felt special. So, yeah, it was, it was really what I needed. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if they were, like, they, they seemed to be enjoying themselves, but, you know, it's Salt Lake. What are you going to do? It's not that exciting. They, uh, they did one encore, and I was really pleased that they didn't save Start Wearing Purple for the encore. They did that in the actual set. Which was nice, because everybody expects that to be the encore. So to just get it out of the way was interesting. So, 
Yeah, what else happened? Did anything else happen? I don't think anything... Nothing big happened. I mean, it was just a really good punk show. And, um... My, all my makeup is pretty much sweat off. Like, my eyes are... I don't look like a raccoon, which is good, but my hair is... I'm surprised it's still upright. Um, this is a very long video. So yeah, um, the one thing that I was really excited about, I was lingering af by the stage after the band left because I thought maybe I'll get a pic, because they keep, they throw pics out all the time and I never got one and I didn't get one of, I didn't get anything, which was fine. I mean, I had the pic from the opening band and you know, I had my pic from the Giants, but I was thinking like earlier, you know, I wish I could remember all the songs they were playing but I probably won't. Oh, won't I? Ah, oh, set list. I was so pleased. They had tons of them about because, you know, all the members need a set list. But uh, <laughs> this guy, I was waiting in front where I had been and one of the roadies came by and was, uh, they had noticed me hanging around awkwardly. And he was taking off the set list from the ground and this other guy came up and was like, hey, do you have a set list? And finally the roadie got it off the ground and was like, hmm, I'm going to give it to her. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. So yeah, um, <laughs> I had all these delusions of grandeur that, oh, I've had eye sex with bassist man, so I'll definitely get invited to go to an after party. And I didn't, obviously, because that's a silly thing. But um, I was actually really relieved to go home and get my liter of coke because I am dying. I pretty much stood in extreme heat and danced. I stood, I, I have been on my feet for over five hours without any reprieve. And then taught that in immense heat, being in immense heat and then spending the majority of that dancing and being shoved incessantly and so I wasn't worn out but it was a good show and what I needed and this is a over 12 minute long video but so if you watch this yay for you if you don't whatever I just needed to get this out so that I can refer to it when I write in my journal so yeah really pleased it was a good night and um, yeah I'm not gonna get gushy because I'm too tired <laughs> Maybe another video, but, um, yeah. Bye.